Hi everybody, this is Kirk Gartner for VFXHaiku.com and today I'm super happy to announce uh, my second feature length tutorial and this one is called Advanced Photoshop Techniques. Um, and basically this tutorial is sort of geared towards intermediate to advanced Photoshop users who are looking to get something new out of Photoshop. Um, it, there's lots of tutorials out there for Photoshop that are sort of like, you know, how to get going, just the bare basics, you know, how to use the clone tool, how to do this, how to do that. But once you've sort of gotten beyond that point and say you've been using Photoshop for maybe a year or two, um, there's not really a lot available. So this tutorial is really targeted towards those people if you are one of them. Um, so we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of stuff here. So I've got a little slideshow. Let's go through here. Um, I, the first two things that I cover are working in 16-bit and 32-bit floating point modes. Um, this is something that not a lot of people dive into, but there's some really, really good benefits to working in 16-bit mode. And I, I talk a little bit about 32-bit mode too, and there's some really, really interesting things you can do in there. Um, if anybody is working with a standard compositing application, like say Fusion, Nuke, or Shake, they all work in 32-bit mode. And so when you want to, um, like when you really want to like enhance your work, and you want to work in a in a way that sort of light behaves um, working in 32-bit mode is really the way to go and we'll cover that and we'll uh, we'll show you the pros and cons of working in 32 bits in Photoshop um, the next thing that we cover are some cool tips for working with transfer modes um, sometimes people call these blending modes um, there's one tip in particular I'm not going to give it away here but it will change the way that you use transfer modes in Photoshop um, it's once I figured this out you'll never go back to doing it the way that you were doing it before I promise you that it's worth it um, the next thing that we look at is how to work non-destructively in Photoshop and this is something that sort of comes from you know my background in working in visual effects when you work on a composite uh, like you work in a, such a way that every single one of the tools that you kind of add into your shot um, they work in a non-destructive way so you can go back and you can change any of those tools at any particular time and when you do that it, um, it allows you a lot more flexibility because you can sort of go back to a tool or make a change after the fact and then um, you can just continue to modify your picture and you sort of never really have to commit to a change so I show you how to uh, or I show you rather how to do that um, the next thing we talk about is some advanced photo manipulation. Now, I take a look at two specific examples here, um, and basically I go through these photos in a really, really in depth, and I show you all the layers, and I show you basically what I was sort of looking for when I was making the changes to these pictures. Um, like when you're when you have a photo and you don't really know exactly what to do with it to make it look better, this section will really, really help you. It shows you like what areas in the photo you can kind of look at to sort of bring your eye and focus your attention into a certain part of the picture. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is file formats. Now, everybody deals with all sorts of different file formats every single day. And I take a look at about five different file formats. I take a look at the Photoshop document, uh, TIFFs, JPEGs, PNGs, and OpenEXRs. And we explain them in depth and we explain why you need to use certain file formats in certain situations. The last section is just miscellaneous tips and tricks. And I cover a whole bunch of like little tiny things here um, I, that I've sort of discovered over my lifetime of using Photoshop. You know, like what happens is when you start using Photoshop, you know, like I started around version three or four, you kind of get stuck in a routine and you often don't go exploring outside of like the, the few tools that you know how to use. And so there's some tips and tricks in here that sort of expose some new options and tools that uh, you might be using on a regular basis. So that pretty much covers everything in this tutorial. If you guys have any questions about the content of it, just feel free to send me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, if you guys buy this and you love it, just send me an email. I'd love to have uh, any feedback on this, uh, positive or negative. Uh, any constructive con criticism is greatly appreciated. Um, it'll just help me make the next tutorial that much better. Uh, so once again, thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoy this. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks.